Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another message from Bible Believers Pentecostal Church. My name is Pastor Winston, and today's message is entitled, An Important Reminder. An Important Reminder. You know, brothers and sisters, we look around our world today and our surroundings, our communities, and we see all over people rising up against people, nation against nation, race against race, um, community against community. You know, wherever we look, we see nations fighting nations, spouses that are uh, constantly at war. Uh, you know, even church members, uh, family members, this family member is not talking to that family member, you know, and there's nothing but unforgiveness all over. And so many people are longing for forgiveness. Many people have made mistakes. Many people have said the wrong things, have done the wrong thing, and they are, they are longing to be forgiven. But on the other side of the coin, many people are withholding their forgiveness. Many people find it difficult to forgive. And that is why we constantly see this loggerheads. Everyone is at loggerheads with everyone these days. Amen. So while many want to receive forgiveness, you know, the first thing you, you do when you, when you make a mistake or when you offend somebody, the first thing you want is for them to forgive you. And, you know, most times when we are offended, the last thing we want to do is to forgive somebody. And so there's this, you know, battle that's going on between unforgiveness and this longing for forgiveness. And, you know, brothers and sisters, we find it so difficult, so hard, almost impossible to forgive others when they offend us or when they do something wrong towards us. Amen. We want to see people hurt. You know, they say hurting people hurt others. Amen. Hurting people hurt people. You know, when someone's wronged us, we want to see them experience the same hurt. This is human nature. We want to uh, have revenge. Re they say revenge is sweet. But that is not true, brothers and sisters. Amen. We want to see those hurt. We want to see them suffer for what they did to us. And we are deceived in thinking that our vengeance in hurting those people, uh, you know, uh, will, 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 will give us a reward. But you know what, brothers and sisters, we find that when we try to get vengeance, we find that we hurt ourselves in the process, agonizing over the injustices, thinking about it for years. Maybe somebody wronged you in 1975, but we are still holding on to these grudges. And you know what? Some, someone said that the heaviest thing to carry is a grudge. The heaviest thing that we can carry around is a grudge. I mean, it's like this heavy, heavy weight upon our shoulders that we carry with us all because of an unforgiving heart. And that, was, that is what the message is about this morning. It's an important reminder. It's something that you and I know that we need to do. And yet it is, we find it so difficult to do. And that is to forgive. This morning, I want to encourage you to choose to forgive. Choose to forgive your neighbor. Choose to forgive your brother, your sister, your spouse. No matter who has offended you, this is the message this morning. Forgive. And it is an important message. It has important implications if we hold unforgiveness in our hearts. Amen. So brothers and sisters, somebody said, I love this quote that somebody said, someone said, forgiveness is to set a prisoner free and to realize that you were the prisoner. Amen. That I was the prisoner. To set myself free and then to realize that I was in fact the prisoner. This is what it's like to have unforgiveness in our hearts. Amen. When, you know, Jesus taught about forgiveness. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 12, and we can read that as our base scripture for this morning. Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. 
Matthew chapter 6 verse 12 and I'm sure you are there already it's a very familiar chapter very familiar uh, book in the Bible and it reads as follows it says uh, Jesus was teaching his disciples to pray and one of the main sentences one of the main uh, parts of this prayer he was teaching them how to pray he says father forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. Forgive us our trespasses. In other words, forgive us our sins, O oh Lord. As we forgive those who sin against us. And you know, most times we say, how can we forgive them? How can we forgive them for what they have done? You know what a sin is? A basic definition of sin is to miss the mark to miss the mark has somebody missed the mark in your life has somebody missed the mark missed your expectations they've let you down in a certain way maybe they've offended you maybe they've done something that has hurt you and they have missed the mark amen this is what sin is and yet jesus is saying father forgive us our sins forgive us for missing the mark even as we forgive those who miss the mark against us. Amen. And so many times we find it difficult. No, they need, they deserve punishment. They don't deserve my forgiveness. That's the last thing I'll give them is my forgiveness. They don't, they need to earn my trust again. They need to earn my forgiveness. I don't just, you know, uh, forgive easily like that. I, maybe I'll forgive, but I'll never forget what they did to me. I will never forget. Brothers and sisters, that's not true forgiveness. Amen. That's not true forgiveness. They hurt us and we, 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 we feel like we need to make them pay. We need to exact that same hurt upon them and make them pay even worse. Make them suffer even worse for what they have done to us. Amen. This is human nature. But what does it mean to forgive us our trespasses? In other words, forgive us our sin. Forgive us our sin. And Jesus goes on to explain it further. The implications. This is why the message title is an important reminder. It is important for you and I to remember this. We know that we need to forgive. But so often times, if we don't take stock of our lives, we find that there is resentment. We find that there is anger towards people. We find that there's bitterness. We find that uh, we hate certain people. You know, we have a strong dislike of certain people. We can't stand to be around certain people. And that is because we have the root, which is unforgiveness. Brothers and sisters, we need to take this and remove it from our lives. The spirit of unforgiveness. Because God has forgiven us amen he has forgiven us of all of the sins that we have committed towards him we have missed the mark the bible says we have all fallen short we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of god every single one of us but god in his mercy has forgiven us amen the bible tells us here jesus began to explain in the word of god in matthew chapter 6 so further on from where we read just now, now in verse 14 and 15, it says, Yes, if you forgive others for their sins, your Father in heaven will also forgive you for your sins. Amen. But listen to this, very important, very carefully listen to this. It says, but if you don't forgive others, your Father in heaven will not forgive your sins wow that is so important and we just brush over that sometimes we, we don't see the implications of that if we do not forgive others our father in heaven will not forgive it it's in the word right here if we do not forgive other people their sins towards us if we do not forgive people for missing the mark concerning us for letting us down, for hurting us, for disappointing us, for offending us. If we do not forgive them, then our Father in heaven will not forgive us. 
our sins. But I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but I don't want anything to come between my relationship with the Master, my relationship with God. I want to stand forgiven. I want to be in right standing with the Lord. And I'm sure you do too, brothers and sisters. So let's be reminded of this important fact this morning, brothers and sisters. If we do not forgive our brothers and sisters who have offended us, who have hurt us, who have wronged us, who have disappointed us, how can we expect our Father in heaven to forgive us? Because we have all fallen short of the glory of God. Nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. We all say things that offend other people. We all do the wrong things now and again. You know, even though we don't want to, we find ourselves doing uh, what is wrong. And that's why we constantly need to come before the Lord and pray and, and, and ask for forgiveness. Amen. And thank Him for His forgiveness. And repent before the Lord of our ways, our filthy ways. Amen. Our sinful ways we need to ask for forgiveness but above that we need to forgive and i pray as we go through this message that you will begin to think about your life at this point in time this is a reminder let's look let's take stock of our lives and to see where we are falling short so that we can come back in line with the word of god amen let's come back in line and see Maybe there's somebody that you have resentment towards. Maybe there's someone you have bitterness in your heart towards. This morning is the morning to let it go. This morning is the morning to, to clean our hearts. Amen. The word of God, we are, the Bible tells us that we are washed and cleansed by the word of God. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, uh, what does it mean? To totally forgive somebody. You know, sometimes we don't really understand. We, we think, no, I, 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 don't, I don't have unforgiveness in my heart. But we really do. If you really analyze the situation, you find that, yes, you do have unforgiveness in your heart. And brothers and sisters, what does it mean to have total forgiveness? To have total forgiveness. What is forgiveness in its simplest form? Well, I'll tell you now, brothers and sisters, in its simplest form, to forgive is to surrender our right to get even. To surrender our perceived right. You know, we think it's our right to get even with somebody. But it's not, brothers and sisters. The Bible tells us that vengeance is the Lord's. Amen. The Lord's uh, is our judge, our overall judge. Amen. And he is the one who fights our battle. He is the one who is our avenger. Amen. We don't need to avenge ourselves. We don't need to exact vengeance on those who have hurt us, those who have wronged us. Amen. That's not our job. That's not our, our place. But we are to forgive. We are to love. We are to extend grace. The Bible says freely we have received grace. The unmerited favor of the Lord. We did not have to earn it. We didn't have to, have to, have to, 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 to uh, you know, deserve it. But God has given us this grace freely. Therefore, freely we are to give this grace. Let's give grace. How freely do we give grace to our neighbors, to those who have wronged us? How freely do you give grace? This morning, let's ask ourselves these important questions. Amen. This morning, as God begins to cleanse us from unrighteousness concerning unforgiveness. So, brothers and sisters, I love what this little boy said. His definition of grace, of, of, of forgiveness, rather. He said, forgiveness is the fragrance that flowers breathe when trampled upon. Amen. What a beautiful definition. When flowers are trampled on, they emit this fragrance. Maybe it's a jasmine flower. Amen. And as you, maybe it's a rose flower. As you trample it, there's a fragrance that is emitted. That is what forgiveness smells like. It's a beautiful fragrance. Amen. And that is what, you know, when people trample on us, when people hurt us, but when we forgive them, it's like a beautiful fragrance. Amen. Don't you love beautiful fragrances? Amen. Wouldn't that be so nice if when people 
hurt us instead of hurting them back instead of being a thorn you will be a rose amen you will be a jasmine flower emitting this fragrance of forgiveness amen beautiful now practically what does this mean let's go into a practically what does practical forgiveness means number one practical practical forgiveness means i will no longer dwell on this incident if you choose to forgive somebody today today is the last time you're going to think about it you're not going to dwell on it anymore you're not going to bring it up point number two i will not bring up this incident again and use it against you I'm not going to say, hey, in 1975, you did X, Y, and Z. I can even remember the color shirt you did. And you said you were going to do X, Y, and Z. And you did A, B, C. And you know, we, I'm not going to bring it up again. If I am going to choose today to forgive you, I should no longer bring it up again. I should no longer talk about it. It's gone. It's forgotten. The Bible tells us, you know, we, we need to forgive like Christ has forgiven us. Forgive like God has forgiven you, brothers and sisters. It's as simple as that. And yet it's so difficult for us to do in our earthly bodies. Amen. But we thank God for grace and we pray that he will empower us to forgive like he forgave us. The Bible tells us that as far as the east is from the west, so God remembers our sins no more. Amen. Has removed our sins from us. Amen. He's removed our sins from us. As far as the east is from the west, so has our awesome Father in heaven removed our sins from us. Amen. He's not going to bring it up again. Every incident. Amen. When we make it to heaven one day. Amen. We pray that we make it one day. We will not... Uh, be reminded about all the sins that God has forgiven us. Amen. Number three, total forgiveness. How do we forgive totally? Number three, we will not talk to anyone else about the incident. You want to have total forgiveness? We're not going to talk about it to anybody else. Yes, I'm not going to bring it up with you, but I'm also not going to talk about it to anybody else. Sometimes we think, yes, we've forgiven the person. And we don't talk about it to them. But behind their backs, we are jabbering. Amen. We're talking about it to everybody else out there. We're running them down behind their backs. But to their face, we're smiling. We're laughing. We're pretending that we are forgiven. But we're still remembering. Amen. Let's forgive and forget. Amen. Forgive and forget. And number four, total forgiveness. Practical uh, example of forgiving totally number four i will not allow this incident to stand between us or hinder our relationship i will not allow that incident to stand in between us and to hinder our relationship you know sometimes people say yes i've forgiven that person i've forgiven that sister i've forgiven that brother yes i've forgiven them but i don't want anything to do with them anymore I'm sick and tired of them. Yes, I've forgiven them. No, oh, my heart is clean. But I'm not going to go anywhere near that sister ever again for what they've done to me. So brothers and sisters, that's not true forgiveness. And somebody said this once to a man of God. And the man of God straight away thought of this in his heart. And he said, you know what? That if that's the way you think, imagine if God has to say the same thing about you yes i forgive you my child but i don't want anything to do with you anymore imagine if god has to say the same thing about us brothers and sisters can you see how wrong this is it doesn't make sense yes people hurt us and sometimes people are repeat offenders they hurt us over and over again and sometimes we don't want to have anything to do with them when we see them walking on the one side of the pavement we look the other way, we cross the road and we're walking on the other side. Amen. Is that really how we should behave as children of God, as people who have received grace from God, who have received forgiveness? We forgive, we, we've been forgiven of much. So how can we hold 
little grudges against our brothers and sisters. Amen. Now, Jesus went on to reiterate this about um, forgiveness. Peter, you can read this in Matthew chapter 18. So we're continuing in Matthew. Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 to 22. Matthew 18, 21 to 22. Peter asked the Lord, he wanted to know more about this forgiveness. He asked the Lord, he said, Lord, how many times do I have to forgive my fellow believer who keeps offending me? Seven times? He asked the Lord a question. And Jesus answered, he said, no, not seven times, Peter, but 70 times seven per day. 70 times seven. Wow, that's a lot of times. Amen. 70 times seven, a repeat offender. If someone offends us, we ought to forgive them. If they offend us again, we ought to forgive them. If they offend us again, we need to forgive them. Brothers and sisters, let it go. Let it go. Amen. Forgive and forget. Amen. Keep the door open for the relationship. Extend grace towards them. And you know, this little boy and girl heard about the scripture one day in Sunday school. And they had an older brother who kept teasing them incessantly. He always teased them. He always gave them a hard time. And he, you know, he bullied them around. And so when they heard this, they were taken aback and they said, what? 70 times 7? So the little boy quickly got out a calculator and he calculated and he found that the number was 490. So he told his sister, it's 490 times that we need to forgive him. But on the 490 time, you better run because then we're going to come after him. <laughs> let's not count, brothers and sisters. Let's not count because 490 times is a lot of times for one day, brothers and sisters. It just goes to show that Jesus, what Jesus meant was that we need to be in this continual mode of forgiveness. It's so much better, brothers and sisters. You know, I used to get so upset when taxis would cut in front of me in traffic. You know, especially when you're a bit delayed because of traffic. And I used to get so upset with them. My face would turn red. I would be enraged. And I would hurl my fists at them and insult them. You know, this is how I used to be. Until I began to think about this. And you know, when I used to get upset, it would upset my entire day. I would have this bitterness, this rage, this anger, this, this unforgiveness towards them. And I started resenting every taxi driver. You know, when they, when they pull up on the side of me driving, I would make sure that I would drive faster so that they don't cut in front of me. Uh, you know, until one day I said, you know what? I can't go on letting this get the better of me. I need to forgive. And you know, I made a choice because forgiveness is at the end of the day, a choice. And I decided I'm just going to laugh. The next time a taxi driver does this, I'm just going to let it go. I'm just going to laugh at them. I'm going to, instead of being enraged, instead of being full of hate, I'm going to just laugh and just love Amen. And just extend grace. And brothers and sisters, my driving journeys now are so much more blessed, so much more enjoyable because now I find the humor in it. When they rudely and abruptly just cut in front of me or have no indicators, you know how uh, taxis can drive here in South Africa. But now I just let it go and I find I have this peace. It doesn't upset me. It doesn't upset my flow. I can continue being productive. I can continue having a good day. Why? Because I have chosen to forgive. So I want to encourage you this morning, brothers and sisters, choose to forgive. Let it go. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will be our portion. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you know, sometimes it's so difficult for us to grasp this forgiveness. But Jesus continued to expound and continued to explain. And one of the methods Jesus used when he taught here upon the face of the earth, when he taught his disciples, was to use a parable. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And Jesus used these illustrations because people love illustrations. It helps us to understand. 
And here in Matthew chapter 18, verse 23 uh, onwards, we read about the parable of uh, the servant and the king. The servant owed a humongous debt, a debt that he could never afford to pay. And one day, the servant was brought before the king in judgment. And the servant pleaded. I think it would have taken 130,000 years to work to pay off this debt. But the servant pleaded with the king. He said, please, 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 please. I will work for you. I will work and, uh, you know, until I'm bare to the bone just so I can pay you back. But please do not judge me harshly. And so the, the king, because he had a loving heart and he wanted to extend grace, unmerited, undeserved favor, undeserved favor. He said, OK, guess what? I am going to pardon you of all of this debt. I'm going to write off this debt. You don't owe me anything anymore. So the servant went away so glad, so joyful. He ran in the streets. Imagine, I'm, I'm sure you can imagine the feeling if all of your debt was paid for, if all of your debt was cancelled. That is the feeling he walked away with. But as he turned the corner, he saw a man who owed him some money, a little bit of money. He saw this man and immediately the vengeance flooded his heart, the anger flooded his heart, the hatred flooded his heart. And he ran to this man and the Bible tells us that he choked this man. And he demanded that this man paid him back the little bit of money that he owed him. And, you know, other people saw this incident and they were uh, saddened. It disturbed them to see that this man showed no mercy to somebody who owed him just a little bit of money. Especially after receiving such grace. And so they told the king about this incident and the king brought the same servant back and he said, how can you do this? I've forgiven you of so much, a debt that you could never pay, but you are holding it against somebody who owes you just a little bit of money, who is indebted to you just a little bit. How can you do this? From now you will burn in, uh, uh, in prison. You will have a torturous death. Amen. Now, this, brothers and sisters, is a type and a shadow of us. The king is God Almighty. The servant is you and I. We are the servants. Our debt is our sin. Our sin is so great. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We could never pay for our sin. No sacrifice could be enough. In the Old Testament, they sacrificed animals at regular intervals to try to make an atonement for their sin. But no sacrifice could suffice for the sin committed by you and I. But brothers and sisters, through the mercy of Almighty God, through Calvary, when Jesus came, God in the flesh came to pay the price for you and I. He rid us. Of our debt he wiped that debt as clear as anything our debt was paid for in entirety our past sins our present sins and our future sins were paid for by the precious blood of the Lamb of God which is Christ Jesus amen we were forgiven through the precious blood of the Lamb we've been forgiven of so much a debt we couldn't pay and yet we hold it against our brothers and sisters when they commit sin against us brothers and sisters how can this be how can we who have been uh, forgiven of so much hold on to grudges you know when our brothers offend us when our brothers sin against us when they miss the mark against us brothers and sisters this cannot go on. Today is the day when we need to choose to forgive. Amen. Let's choose to forgive this morning, brothers and sisters. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 tells us, And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. 
even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Amen. Mark chapter 11 verse 25 tells us, And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let's choose to forgive this morning. Amen. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 21 tells us to this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. When Christ went to the cruel cross, he cried out and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They tortured him. They mocked him. They offended him. They, 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 they let him down. Judas betrayed him. They, 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 they treated him cruelly for something that he had never done. The Bible says he was without sin, yet he became sin for us so that you and I could become the righteousness of God. Amen. They did all of this to him, but he forgave them. The Bible tells us here in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23 to 24, it says, when they, hurled, when they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate, no retaliation from the master. He showed us by example. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Brothers and sisters, let's search our hearts. Amen. The message is clear that we need to forgive as Christ has forgiven us. Amen. So I'd like to end this morning with a quote from Pastor Greg Lowry. He said, Jesus Christ came to pay a debt he did not owe because we owed a debt we could not pay. Amen. Brothers and sisters, when we have a clear understanding of the forgiveness of God towards us, then we will constantly search our hearts and make it our duty to extend the same kind of forgiveness to others. Yes, we are not perfect, but we are all striving unto perfection. We all want to become more like Christ. Amen. I pray that you are blessed by this word. Go forth this, this day in the freedom of forgiveness. Amen. I pray that we search our hearts. Let's cleanse our hearts, our lives of all unforgiveness and walk in right standing with the Lord. And we'll experience the peace of God. Amen. The peace that passes all understanding. Joy will begin to flood our lives again. And, you know, everything will be so much better in our lives. Our days will be so much better. Amen. I pray that you have a wonderful day. Until we meet again, God bless. Amen.